I like to say that I enjoy being a colorful painter. I like color. I like tropical places. Uh, I like the tropical moods uh, that uh, we have in Florida and, and Hawaii and Mexico. Uh, but some beautiful places that I travel to would not be described as colorful. Uh, the misty coastline of the West Coast, pretty much anywhere, uh, certainly the coast of Oregon and Washington, Northern California, uh, the beautiful coastline in Maine, all the fog and the mist, and uh, that has a different mood. Uh, the colorful Mexico painting color selections don't say Maine, and we're looking... Uh, we're looking uh, to utilize grays, but I, I don't want you to just think of neutrals as grays. Uh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. I should be uh, showing you with a brush instead of with my mouth. Uh, this is a bright, sunny day. And certainly we want to be able to portray that uh, in, uh, in our painting. But today we're going to first mix some neutrals on the page and understand how we can get good variety. Uh, for our cools, we're going to have two uh, blues, two reds, two yellows, uh, as usual. Cerulean blue is our lighter blue. Ultramarine blue will be the darker blue. Wild fuchsia, the light red, and permanent magenta, the dark red. Uh, Today we're going to use lemon yellow uh, for our light yellow and burnt sienna for our dark yellow. So those are the six colors that we are going to work with. It's very important uh, when you're painting, if you are going to introduce grays, you want to intermix three primaries. So this is our, our lighter three. This is cerulean blue. And when I say we're going to intermix them, uh, generally I find that to get to gray, I've got to add more blue than the red and the yellow. And the reason for that is that we have two warm uh, ingredients, our red and yellow, and only one blue, uh, cool. And so we have to have a bit more of it to get to gray. And, and as you see, we just mix those three colors together and that pretty much goes to a nice light, pretty neutral gray here. That's a little bit on the violet side. Let me put just a bit more yellow into it and we'll mix a nice gray there. And if we want that gray to be cooler, we just add a little bit of cerulean blue into the mixture and we get a nice cool bluish gray. Uh, if we want that to be a little bit warmer, I'm adding just a bit of our two warm primaries, and this still is a gray, but this gets to be a warmer gray. So we're just mixing those three colors together to get uh, these varieties, I should say, of grays. Uh, and from there, we can and notice this, I'm mixing all of this just right into the puddle. Uh, if we come in here and we start off and I just add more yellow to that, what we get is another, another uh, warm gray. Let me just put it here. Our warm neutral. Uh, but with uh, each one a little bit of variety, a little different note. Uh, so we're adding variety of grays, uh, not just lighter and darker, but warmer and cooler. 
as we're finding these mixtures. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, uh, those two are complete opposites on the color wheel. And those two together will go right to a very nice, very nice neutral gray. That being said, we can take all of this uh, neutral and add a bit more ultramarine into it, and it becomes a cooler neutral. And we're wetting the paste down, and I get it really wet. We're on a slant here. And I'm coming in. Adding just, I want to see that movement. Do you see that it's moving uh, down the page? I don't know if you can see that or not. But here, I'm now taking and, and mixing just some, uh, some bright cerulean blue. We'll mix a little fuchsia into that for that violet. A little bit of yellow. I am, I'm not putting this down full strength, but I want this to have, uh, to be, not just be washed away whenever I bring the neutral into this. So we're starting this painting off in what we might call light wash that we're putting down here. And it's just an abstraction, trying to balance the colors a bit. And now, right now, I'm coming in with my cooler gray and passing over all of this and letting it blend down the page, just touching it in and letting that blend. Need a bit more paint. Letting this neutral flow over, we talked about granulation in some of our earlier classes. And I kind of watch when we get some excitement in the, just the hint of the colors. I'm gonna turn it up and let it blend, uh, Martha. Does that mess you up? Oh, I see it. There we go. I'm going to tilt it to the side. And so here, and I should paint to the edge. Here, this is the beginning of a painting that is now neutralized. But if you look around the page, you see little notes that are a greenish gray and an orangish gray and a blue or violet gray. So that's a, a way of starting a neutral painting that has just a touch of color uh, into it. And that gets us off to a kind of a wonderful neutral start, but it's not just gray. Uh, there's a life in, uh, in, in the gray. And we can now come in and I'm just going to mix a little bit of a darker note there. And we can bring in and let this neutralized color be cooler and warmer as well. And a little more strength, a little more power. Kind of a nice 
luminous neutral start to a painting uh, that shows off, and that's how you know we've got enough pigment down here when it's showing off the uh, showing off the lights. Always want to just come in and soften an edge or two so it's not quite so cut out. Uh, we need to have a lesson on that before too long we will. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being with us. If you enjoyed the demo, give us a thumbs up and write a comment. And if this is the kind of content you're looking for in watercolor, please consider subscribing to our channel. It helps Martha and me out more than you know. Thanks again. See you soon. <laughs> Same procedure. First thing you're doing is wetting down. Give me a page nice and wet. Uh, lots of water. And I'm going to just throw in just a little bit of wash so you can see. I like to see, be able to see. This is so delicate, it's not going to affect anything. But it tells me. I don't know if y'all can see, but when I put that there, I see the movement of the water on the page. And that's what I'm after. So now we'll come in. Let me do it with a bigger brush. This time, same three colors, same concept, same goal. I'm going to strengthen it up just a little bit. We'll pull that in, just bring a couple of these cooler, let me make green so we have a different color scheme, a bit greener, a bit greener. Okay, and the same thing now. Coming in the right of way, it's nice and wet. I'm not trying to control this. I'm letting it tell me what to do. I'm letting it blend down the page and I'm tilting it up so it, it really is running down the page. Touching into it. Trying to watch the page, done. You're running out of paint. Just put a little bit more of that in there. And I'm gonna tilt the board again, Martha. Let it blend. And as before, Need a little more strength of value. So we'll come in and place a couple of darker notes down. I don't know what. <laughs> and where's my dirty mat? So this is a, again, once again, a, a a neutralized page, uh, but certainly not colorless. They're wonderful, kind of like a tortoise shell uh, changes that are happening in here with these granular washes. It is important that you have a lot of water on there so that you get that movement on the page, uh, but just wonderful possibilities with both warmer and cooler uh, uh, neutrals that are begun with our primary colors and uh, we can mix them together and put, as we did with the greens and violets and put in the secondary colors made from those three primaries and then and by the way that is critical I had the neutral pre-mixed uh, so I had plenty of it and as soon as I finished putting the colors in, I came across 
with that neutral, which overpowered the color and, uh, uh, and pulled that page together. How many ways could you do that? I just, uh, it, it really is infinite. And, uh, and a wonderful way to sneak a little bit of uh, color into the neutral page. Uh, I think I said this in the beginning, but I didn't maybe hit it hard enough that everything in painting has to do with contrast. Uh, uh, and it's certainly true here. If everything is just gray, uh, then the gray's not alive. So just as gray turns on a colorful painting, I always try to get a little gray in the palm trees or in the road or something like that in a tropical painting. A little neutral complements the colorful painting just as a little color enhances the neutral painting. So that is something uh, to be aware of when you're painting that misty gray main uh, landscape. 